Well, good morning. Your message of hope for Tuesday morning. And this week we are looking at the well-being of my soul. Yesterday we started this journey with that whole phrase, it is well with my soul, I hope. And we began to give God the permission to look at our soul and our inner workings. Search me, O oh God, see. We finished with the thought of the Good Shepherd, not any shepherd, my shepherd. And we began to say, come on, Holy Spirit, come on, precious shepherd, lead me to a place and restore my soul. You see, I believe that this precious shepherd is so amazing at helping us sort the pain, sort the injuries in our soul so that we can truly say, yeah, it is well with my soul. We can look back at those seasons where we've gone through forgiveness, forgiven the people, but then do the journey of healing, where after we've forgiven, actually just the healing of some of the trauma and memories of all that happened in times of confrontation and difficulty and busyness and change and loss. I believe it does take courage to allow God and allow yourself to go there, to think about these things, to process them. But I believe that God says, come on, I want to come and comfort you. Comfort, come with strength to restore, heal so that you're ready for the next season. And this, of course, requires another level of intimacy, another level of trust. We need to trust that voice of the shepherd in our life as he reveals to us how he wants us to walk in freedom. So I want you to listen to this scripture this morning from Song of Songs, chapter two, verses 10 to 14. Arise, my dearest, hurry, my darling, come away with me. I have come, as you asked, to draw you into my heart and lead you out. For now is your time, my beautiful one. The season has changed. The bondage of your barren winter has ended and the season of hiding is now gone. The rains are beginning to soak the earth and they have left it with the blossoming flowers. The season of singing and pruning the vines has arrived. I can hear the cooing of doves in our land, filling the air with songs to awaken you and lead you forward. Can you not discern this is a new day of destiny breaking forth all around you? The early signs of my purposes and plans are bursting forth. The budding vines of new life are now blooming everywhere. The fragrance of their flowers are whispering. There is change in the air. So arise, my love, my beautiful companion. Come run with me to the higher place. For now it is time to arise and come away with me. And we can hear that intimate call of the shepherd saying, come on, come. You've been in a hard place. But this is a time of springtime, springtime for your soul, springtime for your expectations. I'm going to awaken that which has felt hardened by the wintertime. God is calling you into a new season of intimacy and trust with him, where he will remove all that cold, hard restriction of winter and give you a new song, a new perspective, a softening of your heart. I love it in this translation, the Passion Translation, that phrase, there is change in the air. There's change. Sometimes we can then come into these seasons and begin to realise, yes, I do feel a bit bruised and battered and damaged. And if you're a bit like me, you can go, so what did I do wrong? Why didn't I live healthy? What have I done wrong? Am I bad? Was this all my sin? And of course, there's always that slight mixture. But I believe that after fruitfulness, there's always pruning, tidening, shaping, sculpturing. During this lock time, I've done more gardening than I have done for years. And you begin to realise it's because roses have grown, honeysuckle, all my climbers, 
but they need clipping, shaping, sculpturing. And so it is with our lives. After times of intense activity, fruitfulness, even doing the good things, there are seasons of reset where we need to step back, where we need to let God reshape, wash us, refocus us for the next season. In fact, we see this in the life of Isaac. And I want to go to Genesis 26. You see, here was Isaac. He had an incredible harvest. And we read it in Genesis 26, verses 12 to 15. And Isaac planted crops in a land. And that same year, he reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. He became rich and wealthy and continued to grow and became very wealthy. He had so many flocks and servants that people around him began to envy him. You see, this was a good season in Isaac's life. Everything was flourishing hundredfold. I mean, that is incredible. But then we read this in verse 15. But then all the wells that the father's servants had dug in the time of Abraham were stopped up and they were filled with earth and closed. So suddenly something shifted. Here was Isaac, hundredfold blessing, great harvest, great fruitfulness, and stuff shut down. The very well springs of his life, blessing shut down. We see something similar in the life of Job. Job was doing well, everything was going well. And the devil came and said, Job's doing life really well. We want to shut everything down and then discover what's really going on in his heart. So I have a question for you. What is the dirt or what are the things in your everyday life, a life that has been fruitful, where you've been working, that has suddenly begun to block the well-being of your soul? How are you doing? What has been the enemy's strategy that when you've been working growing, etc. The subtle things, the Philistines, it says here in Genesis 26, the Philistines came with dirt to block the wells. What are the subtle ways that even when you've been working and doing well, doing good, that the Philistines have come and blocked up some of the well-being of your life? I wonder, I've thought of three things. It could be different things for you, but I wonder if it's disappointment that even as you've been working, suddenly disappointment has blocked that well-being of your life. You see, disappointment comes from a deep sense of insecurity, that God was not there when you wanted him or needed him. Disappointment is actually broken expectation, where you feel God missed an appointment with you. And this becomes a perspective issue. And you need to let God heal your soul. You see, your perspective says God didn't come. God wasn't there. God missed his appointment. And that's the devil's lie. But you need to have a different perspective. Say, oh God, let me see what was your purpose. Here's a second one. Discouragement. You see, discouragement is very subtle. Often we're working hard, working hard, then we suddenly find ourselves saying like things, I've been there, done that, tried it, hasn't worked. And you lose your courage to stand, discouragement. No longer are you encouraged to stand. You discourage, you begin to disconnect. You stand back. You see, you begin to withdraw and isolate. You begin to feel that you're not wanted or necessary. You find yourself saying like things, ah, I can't be bothered. Disco discouragement means you begin to disconnect. And actually, this is a trust issue. Discouragement has come into your heart and it's begun to touch your soul. And you need to say, no, God, I trust you. Even when I can't understand everything and it's taking longer and harder, I am going to keep engaged. I am going to keep connected. I am going to press in. I trust you like Job. yet though you slay me i'll trust you the third thing that often comes in those busy times when we're doing well is just distractions it's the snap subtle snares the subtle snares of life 
which just come round us and begin to rob us. It's that classic saying of the good hijacking the excellent, where we lose our real sense of direction and purpose. And this is a priority issue. So maybe as the springtime of your soul and intimacy comes, God's going to show you some of those wounds of discouragement, distraction and disappointment. You see, he's come to heal your soul. And when you come into this new season, he will stir up that well within you. He says, come away, my lovely. Come with me. Come out of that winter time of discouragement, disappointment, distractions. I'm going to heal your sense of priority, your sense of trust, your sense of longing and perspective. And he says, I'm going to give you new life. In John chapter 4, we read Jesus stands up in verse 13 and 14. Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water I give to you will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give to you will spring up within you with everlasting life. So, Father, we pray right now that you would heal our soul and bring springtime. Bring this new well of life. And God, everything that just silted up our well-being, we speak life. Let it spring up. As we come back and let the voice of the shepherd call, he gives us new joy. Isaiah 12 verse 3 says, With joy you will draw water from those wells of salvation. Come on. Has your joy been dampened with discouragement, disappointment, distractions? It's time. So, Father, we just pray right now, no more discouragement, no more disappointment. We thank you for a new trust, a new perspective. And we thank you, we dig into that well. New joy, new joy, new joy. God, restore to us the memories of the joys of the goodness of God. And finally... I believe is that good shepherd calls us. He says, arise, my darling, come. There's new songs. You remember in Numbers chapter 21, the Lord said to Moses, he said, gather all the people together and I will give them water. Then Israel sang this song. Spring up, O well, sing about it. Sing about the wells the princes had done. And suddenly you see when our perspective and our priorities and our trust is upgraded, we suddenly remember, oh wow, God is so good. And the joy begins to bubble up. There's new life for you. There's new joy for you. There's new songs to be sung. Remember, this is your springtime for your soul. I just want to finish with this scripture, which I read at the beginning. Song of Songs 2, 11 to 13. Come on, the season has changed. The bondage of your barren winter has ended and the season of your hiding is over. Rains are soaking the earth. There is singing, blossoming flowers. Can you hear the voice of your lover? He's saying, can you not discern? This is a new day. Destiny is breaking around you and the earth is showing you the signs that your purpose and plans are bursting forth. So Father, today we pray. We'll hear the springtime. We we'll hear the call of the lover. Come on, come. You haven't done everything wrong, but I'm just needing to reshape you, remake you, remould you for the new day. Behold, I make it new for you, new joy, new life, new songs. I'm going to wake up that cry from within you. God really bless you today and remember you are deeply loved.